Okay, um, we're still continuing on the management um, section of the workshop and our next presentations on dynamic reference points um, by Fiera. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, this is my first CAFA meeting. I'm very happy to be here and thanks to the organizer. Um, so I work at the International Pacific Alibut Commission with Alan and uh, I started seven months ago. And um, during this time, some of the work we've been doing has been on a dynamic reference point using uh, Alibut, Pacific Alibut as a case study. Uh, there has been quite a few work done uh, on dynamic reference points and uh, uh, there have been, there are some, uh, uh, some agencies that actually use dynamic reference point in their management. So uh, we felt that uh, uh, in this context of the next generation stock assessment model, it was very important to highlight the importance of uh, including dynamic reference points. Um, so in this talk, I will just uh, uh, briefly uh, talk on how changes in productivity can actually um, uh, are, um, are important to be captured. And um, uh, I will uh, um, describe the difference between uh, static and dynamic reference points. I will present the analysis that we've been doing on uh, Pacific Calibut, and I will just draw some general conclusions. Well, first of all, Productivity. Productivity is the capacity of stock to increase in mass or numbers and uh, uh, changes in, in productivity can occur usually at a low frequency and can be affected by, um, can be caused by a number of, uh, um, of changes such as changes in the habitat, in uh, um, food availability, in the predator prey dynamics uh, or body size. And all these changes can actually alter some of the um, life history characteristics and life history traits of uh, stock populations such as growth, maturity, weight at age, mortality, egg production and consequently recruitment. And, in, and uh, weight at age and recruitment are two actually key, uh, key traits. And uh, um, changes in if, if we don't detect changes in weighted age and recruitment, for example, we can get um, a kind of uh, um, different per perception on the stock we are examining. Um, so for example, uh, changes in weighted age and recruitment can alter the shape of the stock recruitment relationship. Um, so here it's just two uh, example of uh, um, um, stock recruitment relationship. And uh, uh, what you can see is that uh, on the left, on your right side. Um, so uh, holding everything constant um, at different values of uh, um, virgin recruitment, so zero, your stock recruitment curve. Um, not sure. Yes. Um, your stock recruitment curve shift uh, along the vertical axis. On the left hand side, um, right? Well, whatever. Um, you see that uh, um, holding everything constant, uh, if we um, use a different weighted age, what happens is that the stock recruitment curve will shift along the horizontal axis. And uh, the circles here are uh, the virgin biomass, so your B0, and your B0 will change accordingly as well. So this means that your reference point will change. And stock recruitment relationships are commonly used to estimate reference points. So, um, uh, some of the most common reference points are management, uh, are um, MSY, maximum sustainable yield, and their proxies. Um, spawning potential ratio, which is basically the ratio of uh, a fish biomass um, to an unfished, an unfished biomass on a per record base, and then some depletion based reference points, such as the relative spawning biomass. The relative spawning biomass is just the ratio between the current biomass over um, a reference biomass level. And this reference biomass level is usually B0 and is very important if we consider this um, reference level on a static fashion or on a dynamic fashion. Um, so what is the difference between static and dynamic reference point? Static reference points are basically fixed throughout the whole time series, right? So uh, they are based on a, st on a stationary stock recruitment relationship. Um, whether there are shift in productivity or not, it doesn't matter. Your reference point will remain the same. Um, on the other hand, dynamic reference point will capture those changes in productivity. And uh, we see kind of two 
approaches to the estimation of dynamic reference point. Um, one approach is basically just a replay of the past. So you have your stock assessment model, um, you set your fish, you, you start at the beginning of your time series, you set your fishing equal to zero, and then you recalculate the whole stock trajectory to the end. And what you will get is a time series of a dynamic reference point of a B0 uh, in, that will capture actually uh, those changes in productivity uh, through time. On the other hand, there is what we called a dynamic equilibrium reference point. So they are dynamic reference point, but from an equilibrium perspective. So assuming that your, your current condition will remain the same in perpetuity. So um, how to do that? So um, what, what you can do is basically um, take your current condition that can be based either on your last year or on an average number of years and then project it in the future till they reach equilibrium um, and that will be uh, your um, dynamic equilibrium reference point. And in this graph here, I'm basically explain uh, graphically what I just uh, uh, what I just said. So, this is actually um, an estimated time series uh, for Pacific Calibut spawning stock biomass. Um, and uh, so, if we were to estimate a static reference point, that would be it. it would be at the beginning of our, of our time series. It doesn't matter if the productivity changes or not. That will be our static reference point. Um, if we replay our stock uh, with uh, uh, an F equals zero, what we will have is a time series of biomass with no fishing, and that will be our dynamic B0 reference point. Um, so, and this would apply kind of the first approach. But then a dynamic equilibrium reference point would be if we project our population forward and we take either our last year or an average of the last year, our equilibrium reference point would be right here uh, in an equilibrium uh, condition. So re dynamic reference point, of course, are not perfect. There are um, several caveats that have been identified um, in many studies. So for example, they need long time series to actually capture those changes in productivity. Um, stock recruitment relationship are often poorly defined, so that doesn't help. Detection in regime shift is uh, really not so straightforward because it can be confounded with other um, effect, effect from management or from fishing. Uh, prediction are difficult, so what happens if our relationship uh, um, breaks or change? Um, and then um, if actually um, what we are, are assuming is a change in productivity is not, uh, dynamic reference point can actually uh, perform very poorly. However, um, they've been proved to be quite useful uh, for a species uh, uh, like Pacific Calibut. Uh, and the reason for that is that Pacific Calibut is a non-stationary stock. So basically, the average recruitment fluctuates between periods of high and low regime. And this fluctuation has been related to um, changes in the Pacific Decadal, Decadal Oscillation, PDO, which goes from uh, positive periods to negative period, uh, positive and negative again, and uh, um, the recruitment of Pacific Calibut seems to kind of follow uh, this trend. Uh, and actually, uh, when uh, um, the PDO is positive, so in uh, positive regimes, um, the recruitment can actually be, uh, it's actually uh, between 1.5 and 3.2 times greater than in, uh, in poor conditions. So it, it is kind of a strong effect. Um, Halibut is unique for another reason as well. Uh, the weighted age for Halibut has been has changed greatly along the uh, the whole time series. So here we have weighted age for some of the ages, um, and as you can see, also between ages, the changes can be uh, can be quite different. And another thing that you can notice is that. Uh, the changes in weighted age do not follow the same pattern of the recruitment. So you have, for example, uh, positive recruitment phases with low weighted age and then negative recruitment phases with high weighted age and then positive recruitment phases with high weighted age again. So there are all sorts of combinations. So it's a very dynamic stock. So we decided to investigate dynamic reference point for, um, for a couple of reasons. So first of all, we needed to uh, provide a basis for defining the target reference point for management purposes. 
And then um, the second reason is that we actually wanted to investigate the variability and reference point given changes in productivity and selectivity and a different type of uncertainty. So we considered uh, well, some of the most common reference points, so B-Virgin, MSY, uh, the relative spawning biomass at MSY, and the spawning potential ratio at MSY. And to do that, we use three different approaches. And I just want to point it out, all these approach use the, what we call method two. So they, are all, um, they all calculate reference point in an equilibrium perspective. Uh, so the methods that we used was, uh, well, a simple equilibrium model. We used uh, um, the 2018 assessment model and then uh, uh, the operating model from the Costway MSC that uh, um, has been developed for, uh, for Pacific Calibut and that you heard uh, uh, yesterday from Alan. So we consider uh, five main sources of variability. Uh, we consider environmental regimes, uh, weighted age regimes, selectivity, steepness, and natural mortality. So the equilibrium model, it's a very simple model, only two fleets, two sacks, and uh, uh, we use the grid approach for that. So we basically compare the uh, different scenarios across selectivity, across weighted age, steepness, uh, high and low recruitment, and uh, natural mortality. In the case of uh, the 2018 model, so uh, as you might recall from yesterday talk, uh, for Pacific Calibut, they use an ensemble model, um, which is composed by four uh, models that are running a stock synthesis. Um, so what we did was basically uh, use this model retrospectively. So we took each one of the four assessments, we started from the final year in stock assessment, um, and then we recalculate dynamic reference point at equilibrium for each year retrospectively back to the first year of the assessment. Um, and then we use the MSC operating model, which the approach is very similar to what we did uh, with the uh, ensemble assessment model, but the difference is that we use uh, the projected year, so um, the projection is 100 year. We use the last 50 year of the projection, we did exactly the same thing, and we calculate uncertainty based on the different trajectories, uh, based on uh, different recruitment regimes. Uh, the weighted age was modeled as random walk, and uh, um, the changes in selectivity, um, and the selectivity was linked to weighted age. So, here I'm going to present you the results. Um, for this plot and for all the other plots, I don't want you to focus on the numbers exactly, the numbers are small, so, uh, but I want you to focus mostly on the, uh, on the trend and the variability between, um, between the values. So on the top, uh, there is B-Virgin, and at the bottom there is MSY for different uh, uh, scenarios of uh, um, recruitment and uh, weighted age. And uh, as you can see, there is uh, quite a bit of variability between the different scenarios. On the other hand, when we look at the uh, relative spawning biomass and the SPR, the results are quite consistent between all scenarios. And this is for the equilibrium model. So these are the results from the stock assessment model, the ensemble model. So as you can see, each line corresponds to one um, model from the ensemble. And uh, we have again B-Virgin on the top plot and MSY at the bottom. And as you can see throughout all the time series, there's been quite, quite, few, quite a lot of variability. Um, again, if we look at the RSV and the SPR, they've been quite consistent throughout the whole time series. Finally, these are the results from the uh, MSC operating model. So again, we have B0 at the top and MSY at the bottom. And you can see, well, here it's uh, uh, an MSC projection, so it's gonna be flat. But what I, want you to, uh, what I want you to notice is the fact that the uncertainty is quite, quite high, quite large. On the other hand, for the relative spawning biomass and the SPR, the uncertainty is quite reduced. So, so what? So what are the main conclusions from, um, from what we did? 
Um, so, well, first of all, we were able to kind of derive uh, a reference point for Pacific Calibut, so that was great. But then what we could conclude is that while um, B, Virgin, and MSY are highly variable, depending on the regime, on the other hand, the relative spoon in biomass and the SPR are more stable. And the reason for that is, is that they are relative to a dynamic unfished state. So this unfished state is actually dynamic and is changing. And when you and when you calculate this relative reference point in the end, they end up to be quite consistent. Um, also, something that was actually really comforting to notice was that uh, um, even though the three models we used are quite different, the three approaches we used are quite different, uh, the overall uncertainty captured by all model is similar. So the range of values that we found out is, is very consistent between, uh, between the three models. Um, Okay, so um, coming up to the more, uh, let's say, general uh, discussion. Um, so we do think that uh, dynamic reference points are very beneficial for non-stationary stock and dynamic reference points should be really included into our next generation stock assessment model. Of course, there are caveats. So for example, the dynamics must be identified correctly. Um, it's also uh, the applicability uh, depends, of course, on management specific condition. There might be managers that don't want to use a dynamic reference point. Um, and when we talk about applicability to, to management, actually, we should also consider the time lag we, we are going to implement in the sense uh, what's going to happen if we see a change in productivity. Are we going to change our, our advice straight away or are we going to wait for a while to see if that uh, change in productivity actually stabilize. Um, and then in, including this dynamic reference point into our next generation stock, stock assessment model would actually help to understand um, if it can be beneficial for a stock or not. Um, and, um, and the next generation assessment model would surely need capability to compare and transition among different reference point calculation. Also, another thing that would be very uh, important to have is uh, estimates of variance and covariance associated to this uh, dynamic reference point that, that would be essential as well. Um, so yeah, that's the end of my talk. Uh, if you have questions. Okay, thanks. We've got quite a lot of time for questions. Does anyone want to start off? Uh, I think Rick has one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Firstly, I already enjoyed the talk, but um, I was wondering, did you uh, explore uh, fishing related um, reference points like FMSY or something? I'm kind of curious to know what the trends were for that, if you had. Um, no, we didn't really. So um, I guess we, we have those, uh, but we didn't really look at those. Um, I mean, the reason for that is because we don't really use those for, for Pacific Hollywood. So these are the main ones that we actually use. Uh, so, um, yeah, we didn't. Okay. Um, yeah, Rick. So Pacific halibut is a species that has a lot of time varying dynamics and size at age, and that's also going to be affecting your MSY. If, um, and, and of course, there's also the fishery technical things like selectivity that will affect it. But in particular on time varying growth, if you investigated conceptual approaches to try to deal with time varying growth. Um. Maybe Alan can answer that. <laughs> Sorry. Well, in the it's it's included in the um, MSC. It's in, it takes into account uh, variations in growth, and uh, in the assessment uh, we use a weighted age, an empirical weighted age. So it follows the. Um, yeah, the empirical weighted age that but we have. It wasn't your analysis. And in, in the in the equilibrium model, we use different weighted age regimes. So that's as far as we got. I'm not sure if that's ah, that's good enough. Okay, then. Uh, yeah, Pierre, that was excellent talk. Um, fascinating stuff. 
I noticed you had uh, a random walk on your weighted age yeah. through time. But then looking at the plot you had of weighted age relative to uh, cold versus warm, there seemed to be, a, there might be a density dependent effect. I go back a few more slides, please. Ah, yeah, I see what you mean, this one. Uh, no? Not quite. This is the weighted age. Uh, oh, in that, in that case, a bit further forward then. Oh. You, you had a, oh, it was the weight of age. Yes, I, I, I apologize. Go back. Yes, yes, yes. There. Um, so as the, uh, the, the low PCO comes in, I assume density drops and the weight of age goes up. As the PCO gets, uh, goes positive, uh, I assume density increases and the weight of age comes down. Is that a real event or is that just a uh, coincidence, which I don't necessarily believe in? Um, I'm not sure. So one also thing that I think we need to consider about this data, I think part of the old data have been reconstructed and that's one caveat. But then I don't, I'm not sure if that has been investigated. It's coincidence, okay. Okay, for instance, another way Okay, uh, Patrick, you had a question? Uh, I was wondering your thoughts on the trade off of using dynamic reference points for um, catch advice versus stock status determination, particularly related to overfished. Because, I, you know, if things are changing and there's a trend and it matters, then seems like you'd want to capitalize or be precautious when you're giving catch advice. But the, uh, for, in some systems, the overfish determination has policy implications. It, uh, yeah, but we, we do. What? No, so it's a treaty stock. We don't have to go by Magnuson Act. No, I know for halibut. I'm just in general. <laughs> um, yeah, so you know, if you keep lowering the bar, then you never get to this uh, overfish condition, and so you never. I, I guess it comes to okay. So first of all, um, you need to make sure that actually these changes that you're observing are due to changes in environment and productivity. So that's the first thing, and then I guess it comes out a bit to to the lag um, concept that I was talking before. So if uh, can your stock stabilize in a low state? And it comes out like, okay, as soon as you see a change in productivity, are you gonna lower your bar and say, okay, no, you can, f you can keep on fishing as it is just because, you know, the, the, the bar is just lower. Or you just wait for that to actually stabilize. And then when you're sure that that is change in productivity, you can actually act on that. So I think there is a trade off to that and uh, yeah, it depends on how confident you are that this is actually a, a real change in productivity and it's not being driven by, uh, by you know, overfishing or, or other, um, other external thing. I mean, the, the, you know, we are lucky with Hollywood. We have hundreds of years of data and we have trends and we actually have seen those changes in productivity occurring five times in 100 years which is, is pretty lucky, you know, for a stock. It's, uh, it's not all stock have uh, um, this, this situation. So I guess, yes, we do need to be careful. And that's why I also believe that we should have both, including in, you know, in a, in a future framework for stock assessment, you should have both. Um, but I do think it can be useful in, in those kind of, of situations. So. Okay. Um, hi, Pierre. Uh, so if I recall correctly, there, there is some spatial structure to the weighted age in halibut and also the um, FSBR is how um, catch quotas are assigned spatially. I may be remembering that wrong, but I'm just curious if slash how you think this could impact how those get assigned. Oh, um, well, I guess we might figure it out in the next MSC because it will be spatial. So we will have all this information uh, in. Um, it's true, there is 
kind of a gradient. So uh, we divide the stock in kind of four region and one of the region has kind of a different weighted age from the others. And uh, so, I mean, I, I'm not sure how this will, uh, will affect um, these results. But I guess in the next round of MSC, we will be able to tell, um, yeah, when we will include the spatial uh, component into it. Yeah, uh, Andre. Yeah, I was going to just twist uh, Patrick's comment around the other way. I mean, we've tended to focus on stocks that are declining um, and redefine the biomass reference point and say, hey, uh, we're not so we're not so bad. Um, and if you want an Australian example, the jackass Morwong is exactly, that's exactly what happened and, and we weren't thanked for it. Um, I, when Teresa was doing her thesis back in 1413, I think it was, uh, one of the things we were challenged was the inverse of what we're describing, which is what happens as you have increasing biomass. So it turns out you can actually, if you use method two, you can have an overfish stock because your stock is not increasing fast enough. Because remember, the stock has got inertia. It can only increase so fast, whereas the dynamic reference point changes automatically. So you can get a situation where the stock is increasing at 5% per year, but it can't keep up with the, the reference point, And you end up with an overfish stock, uh, even though everything is looking good. Um, uh, that was really weird for us to deal with. I think I can't remember how we dealt with it, but it is a it is something that you if you use this approach, you're going to find that you're overfished even because you've changed a reference point too quickly. I'm not going to answer my question. <laughs> Was it a question? It was a question. <laughs> oh, that hurt. <laughs> I thought it was. Uh, I mean, but again, I guess I guess it comes out on uh, on how much do you wait to actually implement the new perspective. So it, you know, when when the kind of change stabilizes, then uh, you'll be fine. I, I would assume, hopefully. So a, a comment on this, um, dynamic biomass reference points are closer to fishing mortality reference points. So you're actually moving away from your, sure, your standard biomass reference point to a fishing mortality reference point. The other thing is um, these dynamic reference points are probably good for targets, but they may not necessarily be good for limits. Mm -hmm. And it depends on what you really want to limit for. If it's a limit to stop some catastrophe and recruitment occurring, it may be absolute biomass that's important, not necessarily relative biomass. So I, I think a lot of people are starting to move in that direction is use dynamic reference points for targets, but keep to more equilibrium type reference points for limits. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask was, um, it looked from your results that most of the um, influence was based on um, changes in recruitment because the relative reference points weren't changing, but the absolute ones like BMSY and B0 were. Um, but I th would have thought, given the large changes in weighted age, you would have expected MSY to change more over time. So was there some kind of correlation between recruitment and weighted age that cancelled each other out? Um. So these are the changes in MSY, oh, okay. and it is changing quite a lot, I would say. So this is MSY. Sorry, yeah, I wasn't meaning MSY, I was meaning the, the ratios. Like oh, the, sorry. Um, sorry, yeah. It's, there he goes. Yeah, I would have thought that the um, BMSY to B0 would have changed more because your average weight's changing. Um, yes, Alan? But, but it's changing, sorry, but um, the weighted age is changing both BMSY and B0. And I think that's the key is B0 is being recalculated under the new weighted but, age. Yeah, but if you think of the shape parameter of a surplus production model, which is right. basically that, it's affected by selectivity, weighted age, stock recruitment relationship. Mm -hmm. So this is saying that the average weighted age or the growth curve is not having a big influence on the shape parameter of the production model. Yeah, right. 
Well, that'd be interesting for us to examine further. So you were in China doing steep? Uh, no, it so we tested different values of steepness in the equilibrium model and in the assessment it was fixed. Right, but just to, to get it right, I mean, I think if you, not, steepness is the thing that really determines B over BMSY. Well, they, yeah, but not as much as steepness. So if you've just kept steepness, steepness was that doesn't same, surprise yeah. me that the thing that really matters is, is, is if you change, if you had time varying <laughs> steepness, which Noel apparently doesn't believe in, um, then, then you really would get some really interesting results. And, and that's, that's our uh, topic of our next research. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you.